This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Now on RTV6, why a young man says he has to carry his passport with him just to go to the drugstore. And what happened when that passport still wasn't enough for the clerk. It's not a pretty picture, but that's the point. The life-saving lessons meant to help drivers avoid taking a crash course. Plus, we'll tell you what happened near the Purdue campus and why it prompted the school to issue an alert. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nicole Griffin. A U.S. citizen says he was unable to buy over-the-counter cold medicine because a store clerk refused to accept his ID. He's from Puerto Rico and so is his driver's license, but he says the store clerk refused to sell him the medicine he needed without a U.S.-issued ID. Only RTV spoke RTV6 spoke to him tonight, and our Graham Hunter has response from CVS about what happened. I was feeling a little sick. Uh, I had a very bad sore, sore throat. Jose Guzman Payano says a change in the weather brought on the symptoms of a cold. I thought uh, sort of normal, uh, over-the-counter medicine would take care of it. So I went to CVS. The third-year engineering student at Purdue grabbed what he needed, and he went to pay at a self-service checkout. I scan all my items, and then I scan my Musinix bottle. He was asked to show ID to buy the cold medicine, which Payano has no problem with. And my ID is a Puerto Rican uh, license, is a driver's license, and it is a real ID, too. He handed it over to the clerk. She looks at it, and then she phases and looks at me again and uh, asks me, uh, for a U.S. issued license. Payano says his ID has been questioned before, even when traveling at airports in the U.S. A Puerto Rican uh, driver's license is a U.S. issued license that Puerto Rico is a part of the United States, it's the United States territory. Payano says he carries his passport because of how often this happens, but tells me the clerk wouldn't take that either. I need a U.S. issued license or a visa for uh, ID. Payano couldn't believe his citizenship was being questioned. I proceeded to leave the CVS store, um, tears in my eyes. He filed a complaint with CVS and says he was told someone would call him, but that never happened. And now he worries about his fellow Purdue students, many of who are from other countries. How would any other student that's not from the U.S. and is not a U.S. citizen, what do they have to do to get over-the-counter medicine? Payano didn't hear from anyone from CVS for eight days, but after reaching out, RTV6 heard from a spokeswoman who issued a statement. It reads in part, we apologize to the customer for his recent experience. The statement continues, we do consider Puerto Rican driver's licenses to be valid identification. The spokesman tells me they are retraining the employee of the store about what IDs are acceptable. But Payano tells me what happened speaks to larger issues that Puerto Ricans in this country face every day. I always feel like we're always being treated as second-class citizens, especially in situations where Puerto Ricans have to provide their licenses. Working for you in West Lafayette, Graham Hunter, RTV6. Graham, thank you for the full statement from CVS. Head over to our website, theindychannel.com, and click on this story. Let's now get a first check your forecast with meteorologist Kyle Mount. And Nicole, we're getting into that first weekend of November here. A quick look back, though, at the wacky month of October. Started off very hot there. On the first day of the month, our high temperature 92, and then, of course, on Halloween, had a little bit of that snow, and our temperature 47, but those numbers fell pretty quick throughout the day. Temperatures right now, well, they made it into the 50s in downtown earlier today. Right now at 37, it's 36 in Columbus. The winds were a little breezy today. Those have really started to calm down under 10 miles per hour out of the west and southwest for us tonight. Temperatures will be sliding back a little bit, especially once we get rid of more of this cloud cover as you head out the door in the morning. Partly cloudy skies. Those temperatures going to start off around 30 degrees. We're already back into the 40s by 10 a.m. Kyle, thank you. Tonight, a homicide in investigation is underway after someone called police reporting two people were down inside a home on the west side. Around 1.30 this afternoon, police responded to North Waldemere Avenue in a neighborhood off of West Washington Street. Police are not releasing a lot of information right now, but they are confirming a man and woman were found dead inside the home. Investigators are not saying how these two people died, and at last check, they are still trying to determine if they lived at the home. As detectives try to to piece together what happened, they are asking neighbors to step up and contact police with any information to help solve this case. 
So if anyone in the area heard anything, if they heard or they saw maybe a vehicle that was out of place or um, just anything that might have been out of place for this neighborhood, the neighbors would know and we would ask that, that for their full cooperation. That would help us to piece together exactly what occurred here today and exactly the timeline of events that occurred. Police say even one homicide is too many and it's discouraging in neighborhoods where they are working to build relationships with the community. Tonight, they are asking for continued support on the part of the community to help police. If you know anything about this case, contact Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. The Bartholomew County coroner says a man found in a cornfield last month died from an acute methamphetamine overdose. A farmer found Danny Ray Green's body on October 3rd in a field near Indianapolis and Tellman Roads. Toxicology results showed he had an extremely high level of meth in his body. Officials say this is the 17th overdose related death this year in Bartholomew County. Purdue University has issued an alert for its main campus in West Lafayette after two people had their cell phones and wallets taken in an armed robbery. It happened just before 2 a.m. Saturday morning in the 100 block of Pierce Street. That's just east of the campus. Police have a very generic description of the suspect, a white man in a black hoodie. But they are using this alert to remind everyone on campus to be aware of their surroundings at all times. Tonight, a local fire department is putting the focus on preventing distracted driving. According to the most recent stats from 2017, the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute, more than 10,000 crashes were caused by distracted driving in Indiana. And that is why the Whitestown Fire Department is going the extra mile to demonstrate just how dangerous distracted driving can be for everyone on the road. This scene is the unfortunate and tragic result that first responders see all too often. Injuries and fatalities, the result of distracted driving. About 60% of uh, accidents under the age of 18 are because of texting and driving. But it's not just teenagers. I mean, we're trying to relate to one audience here, but it's you and I and everybody that's watching as well. Thankfully, the scene here is not a real crash, and the teenager on the hood of this car is still alive. She's playing a role along with her sister, who is the driver. It's for the Whitestown Fire Department's public service announcement, warning drivers about the dangers of distracted driving. I've never been in a car accident before, so I've never kind of seen this stuff, so it's really interesting to see it, kind of scary. Between 30 and 40 people teamed up from different agencies to help create the PSA. They're using a 360 degree camera showing the viewpoint of the passenger. You'll see everything just exactly like it would be if you had been riding in the car, had the accident, and now you're getting extricated and flown to the hospital. I have seen a lot of those like drug abuse or alcohol videos, but I have never seen one that like went into depth about a car accident like this, especially with like a 360 camera from like the perspective of being in the accident. So I think this is something like totally new and it's going to be cool, I think. Clinton Kraft with Winestown Fire Department says they do a lot of work to prevent fires in the community, but this is a topic that doesn't get enough attention. But we don't do, in my opinion, enough work on preventing traumatic injuries, EMS type injuries, things like that. That we, you know, we're just trying to reach out into another area of, of the community that we can help protect them. And the teenagers taking part in the PSA are already taking away an important message. Not to be distracted driving, that's really important um, to pay attention to the road. We're all too bad about, you know, using our devices or, or not paying attention while we're driving, and we've got to change that. Once it's finished, the video will be viewed in virtual reality goggles at public safety events through 2020 in Winestown. Whitestown Fire was not the only agency involved in the PSA video. The Whitestown Police Department, the St. Vincent EMS Department, Stat Flight, and others also took part. Indianapolis Car Exchange also donated the car. Firefighters had to bring in the heavy equipment to rescue an injured construction worker. This was the scene at 231 North Pennsylvania earlier today. The worker was on the second floor when a preformed wooden wall slipped and hit him. Tactical crews assessed the situation and realized they needed help from a forklift driver who was on the job. They used the forklift to lower the patient about 20 feet to the ground level. The whole thing took about 20 minutes and tonight the worker is in good condition. 
Tonight, the Shelbyville Shelby County Animal Shelter is continuing to offer a $15,000 reward for information that leads to the arrest of the person who left a dog covered in chemical burns suffering in Shelby County. We've told you about justice over the last year in his road to recovery. He was found on November 2nd, one year ago at an abandoned home in Shelby County. The shelter says they have received tips about who owned justice and says the person lives in Marion County, but there is not enough information to make an arrest. They say the former owner called Justice Roscoe. The shelter says there will be an announcement in about two weeks about the reward and other information, but tonight they are still asking for tips to be called in. They say Justice is still recovering and living with a foster family. Dozens of local veterans have a reason to smile tonight after getting some much needed dental care at no cost. Today was the fourth annual Veterans Dental Day at Village Dental at Saxony and Fishers. The goal to provide free dental care to 100 veterans who either don't have insurance or they're scared to see a dentist. This today is really a great plus for me. I really appreciate it. I'm Glad to see him doing that for veterans because, except without it, a lot of veterans wouldn't have any care. For the past three years, Village Dental has provided more than $100,000 in free dental care to veterans and active duty service members. What a great story. In the race for president, Democrats in Iowa each sharing their vision of America's future. We'll have that story coming up. Plus, we'll tell you about a local group that offers a safe haven for men who might find it difficult to open up about mental health issues. Kyle. And it is a quiet stretch of weather for us right now. So small chances for rain and even snow getting back here for the middle of the week. We'll take a closer look. You're watching RTV6. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Continuing our Democracy 2020 coverage, the candidates on the campaign trail in Iowa hoping to connect with voters in the early caucus state. Here's ABC's Rachel Scott with a look at some of the Democrats hoping to win the Democratic nomination. With the Iowa caucuses just three months away, the candidates are making their case to voters. We can have Medicare for all without raising taxes one cent on middle class families. Health care continues to be an issue that divides the Democrats. The only way we're going to provide comprehensive, universal health care in this country, the only way we're going to substantially lower prescription drug costs, is to move to a Medicare for all single payer system. Senator Cory Booker is pushing a different message, one of unity, saying Americans need to unite. It is time that we get back to a sense of common cause and common purpose and understand that we are not each other's enemy, that the enemy is our divisions. Former Vice President Joe Biden has been an early front runner since launching his campaign. I feel confident about where we are. And I think we'll do well here. South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg has seen a recent surge in the polls. Uh, our vision's really connecting with Iowans. Uh, you know, the idea of not just making sure that we defeat President Trump, but making sure we're ready for what comes next and, and actually having a plan for how to bring the country together even while we're pursuing bold policy actions. Senator Kamala Harris sees this as a fight for the country. It's a fight for our system of justice. It's a fight for our democracy. Harris has lost momentum in the polls and has cut staff and closed some campaign offices in order to focus on the early caucus state. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Des Moines. Rachel, thank you. As we begin the month of November, organizations across the country are putting the focus on our men, our fathers and sons who may be struggling with depression or anxiety. Today, a group called Building a Refuge held their big event in Hamilton County at Harley Davidson of Indianapolis. The organization focuses on building a community around men who are hurting and giving them an opportunity the to see hope. They do department. this by sharing their own personal stories. You can imagine. Unfortunately, with men, uh, we have this idea that we have to be strong. We have to, and, and yes, we do want to be strong for our families, but we also need to be transparent in the pain that we have and the things that are going on in our lives. Um, and unfortunately, we don't do that. Uh, and when things start to happen and things get progressively worse, we tend to isolate ourselves. And so that's what we're trying to do with Building a Refuge is bring men out of isolation, uh, out of that time where they think they have to do it all. Talk to you guys about 
Eric Rob Robinson, the group's founder, says he can relate to other men who need that support since he dealt with bankruptcy, which led to anxiety, depression, and an attempt to take his own life. Community saved my life. Um, I, I was one of those guys that I just spoke about, that when struggles and things happened in my life, I isolated myself. Uh, I had this gigantic ego, and my pride was as big as this room. And, and so there was nothing that, that, that anybody could say to me that would, would bring me into something like this. Robinson says they are not a counseling group, just a community group that helps bridge the gap from isolation to treatment. He says there are no expectations, no pressure, just men sharing their stories. They meet once a month at Beer Brewery in Carmel. And now that we are in November, you will start seeing men taking part in No Shave November, a global movement that focuses on men's health. This is a photo we showed you of the Building Refuge group from last year. The movement hopes to put a fun twist on a serious issue using the mustache as a catalyst to give the men an opportunity and confidence to learn and talk about their health. According to Movember, the average life expectancy for men in the U.S. is almost five years less than women. Don't forget, you are supposed to fall back an hour tonight. It means extra hour, an extra hour of sleep and extra time to buy booze. The Indiana Alcohol and Tobacco Commission will let bars and businesses sell alcohol until what would be 3 a.m. Sunday, if not for the time change. Sunday at 2 a.m., time will change back to 1 a.m. as daylight savings time ends. And thank goodness that is happening, Kyle, since we are going on late. It's nice to have that extra time. <laughs> yeah, that sun's going to be coming up here in about seven hours or so uh, not too far away but uh, yeah the weather is nice and quiet and the extra hour of sleep is going to be nice we're going to like it in the morning yeah what i don't like so much is what's coming up tomorrow oh. evening because now that sun is going to set a whole hour earlier mm -hmm. check that out today the sunset at 6 42 tomorrow evening before six o'clock at 541. Yeah, we got several dark evening hours coming our way here as we go through fall and in toward the winter season. Right now, we've got some winter-like temperatures out there. The number is falling down to 34 degrees already. Wind chill is at 27 here. So we've got a little bit of that west to southwest breeze, but it is less than 10 miles per hour. Still enough that it's giving us a chill in many spots. Feels like 36 in Muncie with your actual temperature still in the lower 40s. It's 35 right now in Lafayette. Overnight tonight, we'll dip down into the upper 20s to right around 30 degrees to start off our Sunday morning. So those skies are going to continue to clear out a little bit. 30 in Danville, 29 in Noblesville and Greenwood at 31 degrees. Here's a look at TrueCast for your Sunday. And we do start off quite a bit of sunshine here as the day goes on. Mostly sunny skies, but a few more clouds late in the day. This is TrueCast by 430 in the afternoon. We are not going to have any precipitation that we got to deal with here. Just increasing that blanket of cloud cover late in the day and into tomorrow night. So as we break it down for you, that chilly start temperatures at 8 o'clock in the morning will be in the lower 30s. But we will make a pretty nice recovery here, getting close to the 50 degree mark by noon. A little more of a breeze as we head into the afternoon as well, much like today. Southwest wind, though, 10 to 15 miles per hour, so numbers will get back into the lower 50s with those mostly cloudy skies. 51 for you in Kokomo, 53 in Muncie, and tomorrow afternoon, Noblesville, Crawfordsville coming in around 51. Average high, though, was in the upper 50s, so we'll miss the mark there. Bedford and Seymour at 54. We get a little bit closer on Monday. Temperatures will bump up a little bit, but we're closer to that 50 degree mark than we are closer to 60. There's that average high once again. Next chance for any precipitation coming our way. We've got a small chance for a few showers on Wednesday and then another storm system coming our way on Thursday, possibly bringing a mix of some rain and snow, something we'll be watching closely for you over the next few days. Seven day planning forecast. There's that dry stretch and temperatures in the 50s the next few afternoons. But look at what happens with that rain snow on Thursday. Highs are only in the 30s to end the week. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, no, I don't like that at all. But you're going to need those layers, but not the boots yet. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Well, still to come, a new effort aimed at empowering women to step forward and make huge leaps across the gender pay gap. Yeah. Join us weekdays from 430 to 7.
It's a fact that doesn't seem to be changing. Women simply do not make as much as men. It's even more extreme for minority women. As Maya Rodriguez tells us, there is now a major effort to close that gap across the country. We're still far behind. In a skyscraper nearly 50 floors above a city. I didn't negotiate my first two jobs because I didn't know I could. These women are gathering to ask for more. We've barely budged in more than two decades. What's barely budged? Women's salaries still lagging far behind what men make in America. That's unacceptable to me. That's where the Ask for More campaign is stepping in. The American Association of University Women is holding free workshops across the country to teach women how to successfully negotiate a higher salary. The goal? Train 10 million women in the next three years. Women make up half the labor force, yet it still is a man's world in how workplace hiring and promotion practices take place, and it's on us to really change them. I found myself needing to really uh, ask, ask for more money than I think uh, I was getting. Samantha Hamadan is an immigration lawyer who came to this New York City workshop after recently trying to ask for a raise. I'm hoping to really be able to uh, parlay these skills uh, into asking for more money uh, uh, at the next position. I remember asking for my first raise ever was the scariest thing. Renowned fashion designer Rebecca Minkoff says salary negotiation can feel intimidating for some, but there are ways to work through it. Among the tips, bring a list of your work accomplishments with you when you ask for a raise and learn how to find out similar salaries for your job. There's actually a language and a technology behind how to ask for more, and so I think women are going to come away learning these skills. But the women leading this effort say even when they train 10 million women to advocate for better pay, it's going to take a lot more than a series of workshops to close the gender pay gap. I would love it if women could negotiate away the pay gap, but it's going to take companies to be more transparent about their salaries, to have more equitable practices. Until then, these women know their future salaries rest in their own hands. In New York City, I'm Maya Rodriguez reporting. Maya, thank you. Delta Airlines says it will now show same-sex love scenes that were edited out of two in-flight movies. The movies at issue, Rocket Man and Booksmart. The omissions came to light after the director of Booksmart retweeted a person who complained about a love scene being omitted on a flight. A couple days later, an entertainment magazine noted the omission of gay references from a Rocket Man, including a love scene. Delta says studios provide two versions of every movie, one edited and one unedited. They say they chose the edited versions of those two movies without knowing which parts were not included. The airline says they are immediately putting a new process in place for managing content in their in-flight entertainment. This late version of RTV6 News at 11 will be right back. eBay says Friday will be Black Friday through December 13th. It said each Friday shoppers will find Black Friday worthy prices on popular holiday gifts on eBay. The series of Friday drops started yesterday with a deal on Apple Watch Series 5. Shoppers can check eBay every Friday at noon Eastern to get the deal of the day available as supplies last. That includes the actual Black Friday the day after Thanksgiving. eBay has already announced some of the items it will sell on future Black Fridays such as the Nintendo Switch Lite, but the prices are unveiled on the day of each deal. And by the way, items ship free. A lesson in art therapy and a lesson in history. The Van Arsdale twins visited patients at Riley Children's Health. Tom and Dick Van Arsdale are both former NBA players and members of the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. They played at IU and Manual High School. Dick suffered a stroke several years ago and used art therapy as a part of his recovery. Tom says both brothers have always enjoyed the arts. We think that it's... Um it's spiritual, it's invigorating, it's calming, it takes stress away, it's beautiful, and it's so independent. Riley Health says art therapy has no age limit. We have a few days this week that might be good days to stay in, do some art. <laughs> yeah, work on uh, some of that artistic ability. I got a long way to go. <laughs> Seven-day planning forecast shows that we've got those highs improving a little bit lower 50s through Tuesday, but then much colder to end the week. Kyle, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night.